Here's how I scanned all 1,042 of my medium format film photos from my journey to all the lower 48 states asking a thousand strangers for life advice. In theory, scanning film with a digital camera is pretty simple. It just has to be done uh, correctly and delicately, otherwise you risk low quality results. And for me, that's the last thing I want after spending essentially a dollar for every single photo that I took between buying the film, developing it, and scanning. You're gonna hear me use that word, scanning, quite a bit, and that's because typically when film is digitized, it's done so with a dedicated scanner, like a flatbed, and there's also drum scanners and other types like that. For my purpose, digitizing with a digital camera, I, I've always gotten better results than I have with flatbed scanners. So that's why I'm gonna continue to use that word, scanning. First thing I do is invert my tripod and level out the camera using a leveling cube, which allows me to make sure that the camera is perfectly flatly pointed towards this film holder on a light box, and I'll show a little bit more about that in a second. But because this is such a huge and important project to me, I actually rented out the Sony a7R4, a 60 megapixel digital camera. It cost me about $120 to rent for the weekend. I had it for a total of four days, which is a steal considering the fact that that camera is about $3,000 to buy. I'm using a lens that I already have. It's the Sigma 70 millimeter macro art lens. It's one of the the sharpest and least distorted lenses available today and it's perfect for digitizing film. I get the room ready by pulling down the blinds and closing the curtains, which for my purpose gets the room dark enough to where no excess light is going to be reaching the negatives as they're being digitized. And before handling any of the film, I put on some lint-free gloves. Now this prevents both fingerprints from getting onto the negatives and it prevents any dust or lint from getting onto the negatives. For those of you who are unfamiliar, any dust that gets onto the negatives while they're scanned is going to show up in the final result. Now you can get rid of that pretty easily in Photoshop and even there are programs that do it automatically, but those programs that do it automatically don't do the best job and any dust removed in the actual scanning process means less time editing in Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever you use. Now I'm finally ready to slide my negatives into the holder. This holder is made by a company called Negative Supply and they make ultra precise, really high quality things for film scanning. Even though it's a pretty simple thing, it was pretty expensive and it's sitting on a Cricut Bright Pad, which for black and white film is perfectly fine for scanning. It might not be the best for scanning color film. And when I turn on the light box, I can finally see my negatives negative on the camera. To make sure I'm getting the sharpest image possible, I use an aperture of between f8 and f11, always ISO 100, and then I adjust the shutter speed accordingly to make sure that it's a nice, properly exposed digital image of the negative. And that totally depends on how exposed your negative is. Because I'm scanning square images, even though I'm using a 60 megapixel camera, that 60 megapixel image is what happens when you take a three by two image. Since I'm taking a one by one, what I'm really getting is about 36 megapixels, which is still an insanely high quality scan. And with the lens I'm using, it is perfect. I can make this huge. I could turn this into billboard size and it would still be excellent quality. If I really, really wanted to get a higher quality scan, I could scan two halves of each image and stitch them together later, but I think that's overkill for this purpose. Like I said at the beginning, this can be a little bit of a delicate process. Those lint-free gloves are one example. Another example is that if the camera shakes at all while it's taking the photo of the negative, you get a blurry scan. Things that can cause the camera to move are even as simple as just me walking around the room. It can cause the camera or the light box or whatever to vibrate just a little bit, but enough where it's noticeable. Another thing that can result in less than perfect scans is if the camera becomes not perfectly level. So to prevent even touching the camera after leveling it out, which could cause it to become unlevel, I have the camera connected to my laptop and I can open up software and I can press the number one key on my keyboard to take a photo using my laptop. That way I literally don't have to touch the camera. I level it once and it's good to go. And to be even more careful about this, I put my laptop on a soft surface like a towel so that when I push down on the one key, even that, even that will not vibrate the camera on the table. One of the nice parts about being able to use my computer and have a software connected to the camera is that I can also adjust the camera settings while I'm doing this process. So for example, if I get to a really dark 
negative and I need to expose it more, I can change the setting on my laptop and I can look at the histogram there and make sure that the curves of the histogram are more towards the middle, which just means I'm getting all the information that that's actually there in the negative. Whew, that's kind of a lot, but once that's all set up, really all that's left to do is to scan. I take a photo, I scoot the negative over to the next photo, take that one, do it again. And once I've got it and I've got it in strips of four, I put the strip back in its sleeve, pull out the next one and do it again. So I timed myself and on average took around three minutes for every roll and each roll is three of those four photo strips. I had 87 rolls. It, in theory, it should have taken me about four and a half hours. It was probably close to that, but when you add in uh, setup time and then also just taking breaks for my sanity it, it was longer than four and a half hours and that doesn't even factor in the time that it's going to take to then convert all of these images and edit them and all of that that's gonna take who knows how many hours but that's how I scanned 1042 it should be 1044 there were two blank spots on on two of the rolls that's it 1042 images scanned in and what should be just a few hours, but probably took a little bit longer, but they are extremely high quality scans. Here are a few examples and I'll show these a little bit closer up and I'll have it zoom out. So you can see there's a lot, a lot, a lot of detail in these scans thanks to a high megapixel digital camera and a really, really sharp macro lens. I hope that was informational or helpful for you to see. If it was, feel free to subscribe right here on YouTube and I will see you in the next one.